Hey, it's Gareth Flood here. If you're in the B2B to C operating environment or business model and wondering how you need to adjust your marketing strategies, you've come to the right place. Now, inserting a B2B entity or customer between you and the end customer or consumer requires a specific skill set. Let's find out what that is. In this video, we're going to go over the B to B to C business model. Now, this model is a lot more prevalent than you might think, and it's also as simple or as complex as you want to make it. We're going to go over the two biggest things that you need to do with your marketing to hit your goals in this environment. Lastly, we're going to talk about how to do marketing planning in the B to B to C environment. Okay, let's get into it. So let's talk about the B2B to C business model. Now, if you're still a bit unclear about what is the definition of B2B and B2C, I made another two videos on that and I'll put the links for those in the descriptions below. So I made one video about what is B2C and another video about what is B2B marketing and the differences between them. Now, B2B to C at its simplest is simply this transaction. You, and we're talking about the same product going through this value chain or through this line, if you like. So you sell your product to another company, which is a B2B transaction. That company sells it to the end customer who uses it or the end consumer who consumes it, whichever de definition you like. And that is a B2C transaction. So that's why it's called B2B to B2C through that line. You're inserting someone between you and somebody, the end customer or the end consumer. That's it. So keep, keep that in mind and then let's sketch out some of the variations with some examples to see what we are talking about more specifically. Whoa, it's okay. Just breathe, be calm. It's not as bad as it looks. I'm gonna sketch through all the variations or many, most of the variations and then I'm gonna super simplify it again for you. So don't worry. And apologies for the writing. That is actually a tactic to make you watch the video over and over to know exactly what happened when. So let's talk through an example. So if you think about your car, if you don't have a car, you've been in a car, there's lots of things inside a car that you're not aware of. So if you think of like spark plugs, brake pads, fan belts, rubber mats, if you need a new spark plug for your car, you don't go to the spark plug store that sits next to the Apple store in the mall. That doesn't happen. So all of those companies are in the B2B to C environment. That's you, the little green person consuming at the end. How, how do they get that product into your car or into a car or the Uber that you use? So let's talk to an example. Let's use the example of car air fresheners. So what is a car air freshener? Those little dangly things you see on the mirror, like it's a Christmas tree or a bulldog or something. They hang in the car, they make the car smell nice, or they're little gel things you stick on the vent, air comes through, makes the car smell nice, or even sprays like a deodorant for a car, it makes your car smell nice. So well, let's invent a company they're called Car Fresh, and they sell car air fresheners, which they manufacture, and they need to get in your hands and into your car. What are their options in marketing and in the marketplace? So the first is they set up their own online store and they sell directly from their website. So this is their, them selling their product directly to you. You log into the store, you go to their website, you buy it, you get it delivered to your door. Now that is still a B2C direct transaction because it's the manufacturer selling direct to you, straight B2C. Next option, they could set up a physical store. So they could set up a car fresh store, car fresh branded, you go to the high street, main street, you go to the mall, there's a car fresh store, a physical store, you go in, you buy your car air fresheners. Also a straight B2C transaction. They're selling it to you, the end customer, who uses the product. Their next option, which is the one they mostly use with these types of companies is they sell to retailers. 
So they sell to the shops to stock it to sell onwards. So the big examples in many countries, you have Walmart, uh, you have Carrefour, you have um, big auto chains, like in the US, things like Pep Boys, That's these are the companies that sell everything a car might need, like a car superstore, and you go there. Um, uh, other high street stores that sell all of these, so there's like small spare parts and car shops that you go to the high street or the main street, but you can find these, they kind of, agglomerate all the parts and things you need for a car. You go to them. Um, and even Amazon does this now. Amazon buys direct from companies uh, and then resells it. So it's not the company selling itself on Amazon. That would be up here. They set up, oh, sorry, up here. They set up their own online store on Amazon. Amazon buys products and then resells them themselves. So that is a B2B transaction. Let's imagine they're selling to Walmart. Walmart's interested in product quality, price, tough negotiation because there's lots of car fresheners in the market. It's a B2B transaction. They then stock it and they then sell it to you. When you go into that store, you buy it and that is a B2C transaction. So it's their job also to sell to you. The next B2B2C one is where else does things happen with cars? Cars get repaired, they go to car workshops, they also go to car dealerships, which is a different type of workshop. It's uh, often branded. So you see a BMW, Audi, Volkswagen, Ford dealerships with a big sign on the outside. When you buy a car, it's normally under warranty for two to three years. You take a car back there to get serviced and they put air fresheners in there. So that car fresh is a B2B transaction. Again, they're selling directly to workshops to groups of workshops, chains of workshops, like the Ford dealerships, and individual workshops. You know, John Smith's workshop, you can go and sell to him. They then sell to you again. So it's B to B to C. And their last option is they can employ other B to B agents as well in the chain. So uh, distributors. So distributors are people who will take the product from the manufacturer and they will then distribute it further, they will then sell it to retailers or in other businesses or workshops who will then sell it onwards. So a distributor, I'll come and talk a little bit more about these guys, uh, these people just now. Um, they operate slightly differently, but that is a t potentially another step in the chain. And an interesting way to start thinking about this is a chain. There's many steps in the chain and I'll come back and talk about just now about why it's actually called a value chain. But that is the basic premise of how it works across B to B to C. And as I said before, it, it can be easy, it can get quite complex if you let it. But the key thing to remember is basically, all of this transactions require B to C strategy and marketing, and all of these ones require B to B. So it's basically two big bubbles. You can divide up what is happening between your product and what is happening to the end customer or person who is consuming it. This is a B2C transaction. This is a B2B transaction. And if you go back to those other videos, there's consequences for that. This, you need to tailor your marketing and your strategies to a B2C environment. And this, you need to tailor it to a B2B environment. But here's the real summary. For all this to happen, you here as the manufacturer or the person with the product, you need an integrated marketing plan going across these to make it work. If you're only good here, your value will die and your sales will die here. And if you're only good here, it's better, but still you're going to also struggle. You need an integrated strategy and marketing plan across the chain and that is how you deal with b to b to c marketing hey if you like this content then head over to my website at steps growth.com and i've got a free video there and case studies that shows you some of the best ways to grow using marketing strategies and marketing techniques so head over to that website and you can check out that free video put the links in the description below bonus section here's a quick bonus point for you this type of activity can also often be called a channel map. So you have you as your you as your company and your product, and you have your end customer, and these are the different 
channels, sometimes also called uh, route to market, route to market, or go to market strategy, figuring out what are the different channels to get to where the demand is. Strip it right back to what is business, right? Demand. So where is the demand? And I have supply. How do I get my supply to match up the demand? And I will be covering this as a future topic, how to manage channels and channel mapping. And again, it can get quite complex. So the job here is to keep it simple. So if you hear the word channel or channel mapping, it also looks like this and we'll cover that in the future. So watch out for that one. So if you are operating in this environment or you're going to be operating in this environment, the two biggest things you need to do relating to your marketing strategies and plans, the first is you still need to build a brand. And the second is you still need an integrated an integrated plan. So let's talk about the first one. Why do you need a brand over here? Because if you're a manufacturer over here and nobody's heard of you over here, why would they even buy you? There's brand awareness and brand preference. If your brand awareness is zero, nobody, nobody even knows you exist. And then the second thing is if people are aware of you, but they don't prefer you, you still have a problem. They're still not going to buy you. So you still need to build a brand because again, you're, you're generating demand. The demand is there, but you want it to come towards your product. And you can see how a lot of companies do this. This is why food companies spend so much money on advertising still on TV, radio, the internet, still building those brands, all the cereal companies, food companies, um, Coca-Cola is a great example. All of their advertising is targeted here in the B2C environment at the end customer. And what they're trying to do is create what's called brand pull. So people here are aware of your brand, they prefer that brand, and they are going in to the B2B places and asking for the product. That's the ideal, ideally what they want. So people are going into shops, they're going to restaurants, they go, and they're asking for Coca-Cola. Um, that's what they want. So you think of what Coca, where Coca-Cola distributes, you don't go to a Coca-Cola store either, they, but it's available absolutely everywhere. Their distribution to all of these chains is absolutely massive, and they spend all of their time building a brand. So no matter where you go, if you go to a petrol station, a restaurant, a food court, uh, your own company, Starbucks, coffee shop, you, that you want, they want to ask, do you have Coke? Do you have Diet Coke, etc. And then, because there's not many other products like that, just like there's with car fresheners, their only other job is to make you prefer Coke over Pepsi. That's the only other job. So that's the difference of brand awareness and brand preference. So a company like Carfresh, they have to build a brand. So ideally people are asking for the product from the B2B people. So when these people are deciding, I only have so much shelf space, or um, I'm in a car workshop, I only have so much storage space, I can only stock one or two brands. And if there's five brands out there, you have to be one of them, or you're not even gonna get into the market. So they want to know, oh yes, you have a good brand, we will stock you. So it's easier for them to sell, because remember, you've got retailers, workshops, other people selling your product. They want the end customer to know you and ideally be asking for you. Otherwise, they're trying to sell your product cold, and that is a very hard road to hoe. So you build a brand, so you're getting demand pull over here, coming back through the chain, and then your product is just flowing through there to meet the demand. If you're trying to sell something, and these people have never heard of you, and these people have never heard of you, you have a big problem. Because here's the big problem, otherwise, your only other option is to try and do a, a push strategy. So if a, a brand is a pull strategy, you want brand pull, pulling the product through the chain, then if you don't have that, and if you're starting out, you probably also have to do a bit of this. It's a push strategy. So you have to take all of your marketing, your product proposition, your value proposition, why your product is good, uh, the price positioning, you have to go and sell it into this person, 
sell it into this company, sell it into this company, sell it into this company, and then enable and train them to sell it onwards. So you're trying to train them to sell it here, you're trying to train them to build the brand and sell it here, you're trying to train them to sell it here. So there's a lot of training and incentives to push, you're trying to push the product through the chain, but you've got to push it to them, they've got to push it to them. And in reality, you want a bit of, the reality it'll be a bit of both. There's very few examples where it's purely on brand, maybe Apple's one where the demand is so big, it just goes direct. And that's what Apple did. They, they, the demand was so good, they just went direct. They used to go through distributors and resellers and authorized shops, and they canceled all that and just went direct B to C. But most people, most companies, it's a mix. You want a good brand that is generating pull in the marketplace to the, for the product, but you also still have to sell into the retailers why your product is good, uh, what differentiates you, what incentives you have, uh, and then help them to sell the product onwards. And the second big part, so you still need a brand, point number one. Point number two is that's why you need an integrated plan. If all you're gonna do is spend your money on branding, but it fails to sell in to these people, you're going to fail. But conversely, if all you do is say, well, I just have to sell to the retailers, I just have to sell to these people, job done. It won't, your, your stock will stay stuck here because these people won't be asking for it because they don't know who you are and they don't prefer you. Uh, or you haven't trained them enough to push it onwards, which is also difficult. So the two biggest things in the B to B to C environment is you do need to focus on building your brand and you need an integrated plan for how you deal with the B2B part and also the B2C part. If you are someone who is looking to take your business to the next level via marketing-led profit growth, then I invite you to book a call with me. So this is for you if you have an existing and successful business, but you recognize your marketing is the weakest link in your chain, you're an entrepreneur or business owner, you know exactly what you're doing, but you don't have any experience in marketing, and you want to put together a great marketing strategy and plan that you know, that you own, before you can delegate it to other people, and invite you to book a call with me. We'll work through where you are now, to where you, need to want, where you want to go in the future, and every step to get there. And I have 47 plus tools and techniques, plus a great marketing planning process, to get you the marketing plan you need that delivers double digit profit growth. And I've got lots of case studies to back that up of how that is done. So if that is of interest to you, then click the link below. You'll be able to schedule a call directly with me or someone in my team. And I look forward to talking with you on the inside. Bonus point number two, if you are dealing with distributors, and in some markets you also have resellers, which are slightly different, but if you're dealing with distributors, I've got a top tip for you. Do not treat distributors like customers. Now, I'll be going deep into distributor management in future videos, but for now, if you sell to a distributor and they sell to other people to sell the product onwards, then technically, yes, that's a B2B transaction. And technically, yes, they are your customer in that they are paying you for your product. They stock it, they sell it to other people. However, distributors, their main role is to distribute the product, to get into areas of the market where you cannot either physically yourself or it's not cost effective to, or for example, in other markets, overseas countries, etc., etc. But here's the top tip. Do not treat distributors like customers. If you treat them like a customer, then you're giving them all the power about price negotiations and you're in a race to the bottom of the price is never low enough, you never give enough marketing support, etc., etc. A distributor is actually, should be treated as a partner where your relationship is defined by the distribution contract that you have. So like I said, I'll be going deep in this in the future, but for now, do not treat a distributor like a customer because you will enter a world of pain. So that's it. So in conclusion of B to B to C business model and operating environment, conclusions are three. First one, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. 
it'll try to blow out in complexity, reduce it again to B2B, B2C, what are you doing with each of them? Second, yes, you need a brand. And the third, you need an integrated plan across B2B and B2C as it goes through the chain from you to the end customer who uses it or consumer who consumes it. And that's it. So hope you found that very useful. Let me know if you are now have a revelation about you are part of B2B to C value chains or operating models or businesses that you weren't aware of before, or you're suddenly aware of you seeing this everywhere and I wasn't aware of that before. Any specific ones that you're now aware of, let me know in the comments below to see if other people can learn from your example as well. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you for supporting the channel and I will see you soon.